Holla. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I will bless the Lord at all times, uh, and his praises will continuously be in my mouth. Uh, somebody magnify the Lord. Somebody magnify the Lord. Hallelujah. Tap your neighbor and say, I have a reason to dance. Look at somebody and say, I have a reason to dance. Look at somebody else and say, I have a reason to dance. This morning, put your hands together. Oh, let's lift it up before the Lord on today. He became sin. Who knew no sin? That we might become his righteousness. His body was broken. For our transgressions But I'm so glad That's not where the story ends The Lamb never slain That day rose in victory Since that day Sin has lost its grip on me Do you believe that? So hallelujah He's alive, hallelujah, he's alive. Oh, I need you to move in your seat. If you know the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is alive. Oh, let's lift it up all over this room. Hey, she gave me a reason today. Hallelujah. He gave me reason. Oh, somebody lift it up where you are. Gave me. Say he became. Say who knew no sin. Oh, take that and say that we might be God. His righteousness. Oh, somebody to clap it in the room. Say your body was broken for our transgression. But I'm so glad that's not the story. Somebody say, the Lamb never say He rose. Oh, somebody take up and say, since the day sin has. Oh, do you believe that in the room? Say, hallelujah. Say, he's alive. Oh, somebody to clap, say, hallelujah, say, he's the last, a reason to dance, hallelujah, gave me a reason to dance, to clap and say, 
today. Hallelujah. Gave me a reason. Gave me a reason. Oh, if you know you got a reason to move your body, say, gave me a reason. Yeah. Oh, can I declare it right here? I'm dancing out of my gray clothes. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Morning's here and I'm grateful. Anybody grateful? For the Savior got up in victory. Say, say whom the sun set is truly free in morning's here. Yeah. Somebody lift it up and say, I'm dancing now. Say whom the sun sets free, truly free in morning's here. And I'm grateful for the Savior God up in victory. I'm dancing out. Say whom the sun sets free, truly free in morning's here. For the Savior God up in victory. Somebody begin to open up your mouth. And bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times, and His praises shall continuously be in my mouth. So hallelujah. He's alive. He's alive. Say hallelujah. He's alive. Say he's alive. Hallelujah. Say he's alive. With the power, hallelujah. Say he's alive. Say yeah. Say hallelujah. Say my God, he's alive. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. Say he's alive. Say yeah. Say hey, hey, hey. Somebody bless the Lord. Somebody bless the Lord. Somebody bless him. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and say, my God's alive. Look at somebody and say, my God's alive. Hallelujah. Are you happy to be in the presence of God this morning? I said, are you happy to be in the presence of God this morning? Because in his presence, there is fullness of joy. There is fullness of joy <laughs> in the friends of God. I, you are free to run. You are free to dance. You are free to be free. There's no shackles, no chains. There's no bondage. Anybody free in the Lord this morning? I said, is anybody free in the Lord this morning? Hallelujah. You know, the amazing thing is, God, we can always run to God. Because he is ours. He is nothing but a short distance away. And the amazing thing about him is we always make him out to be so far away, but he is right here. We can trust and depend on him because we know that we are his, but we are his, but he is also ours. <laughs> can we just throw our hands up in the presence of God? Can we just throw our hands up in the presence of God and begin to meditate on the goodness of God and just let him know that he is ours. We are yours, God. We are yours. Every ounce of our being is yours, God. We adore your great name. Oh, just reach your, head, your hands up towards the heavens and begin to serenade the sweet name of Jesus. Begin to open up your mouth in adoration to our Father. Yeah, we belong to you. Oh, Woo. can we lift it up right here? Cause your tongues flow through my lips, your works move through my hands, your thoughts stay in my mind, live in me. Your song flows to my lips. Your words move to my hands. Your thoughts stay on my mind. Live in me, and you can have all of me. Have all of me. 
have all of me. Say to y'all, say, I'm yours. Say, clap and say, I give you all of me. I give you all of me. I give you all of me. Say, I'm yours. God, I'm yours. Can we lift it up towards the heavens and clap it in this room? Say your songs flow to my lips And your words move to my hands And your thoughts stay on my mind Say, live in me Oh, the clever say Your songs flow to my lips And your words move to my hands And your thoughts stay on my mind Say, live in me Oh, to a real big say You can have, say You can have all Jesus have all God. Oh, the clever say, I'm yours. Hey, I give you all. I give you. I give you all, Jesus. I give you all, God. I'm yours. Oh, the clever say, your words, my mouth, and your thoughts, my mind, and your love. My heart say, here's all, say your words, your thoughts, my mind, your love, my heart, say here's all, here's you can have all of me, God, your thoughts, my mind, your love, my heart, say here's all, say you can have all your words, my mouth, your thoughts, my mind, your love, my heart. Hey, say you can have, say you can have all Jesus, have all Jesus. I'm yours. Oh, say courage, say I give you all, I give, I give you all Jesus, I give you all God. Uh, say I'm yours. Uh, yeah. Say your word. Say your word. Your thoughts, my mind. Your love, my heart. Say his all. Say his all. Say your word. Uh, your thoughts, my mind. Your love, my heart. Say his all. Say his all. Say here's all Jesus. Say here's all Jesus. We present our bodies as a living sacrifice. Say here's all. Say here's all Jesus. Say here's all, Jesus. Say here's all God. Hey, Cause you can have all of me. Have all of me, have all of me, I'm yours. Say in the back, say, I give you all of me, I give you all of me. Say, I give you. I'm yours, I'm yours. You can have all of me. Say, have all of me. Say, say, have all I'm yours. I give you all of me. Give you all of me. Give. I'm That's your confession. Lord, you can have all of me. You can have all of me. My thoughts, my mind, my love, my heart. Father, here's all of me.
And you know what? That's, that's really easy to say when things are going the way we want them to go. Father, you are good. I love you. I appreciate you. I worship you. I honor you. Here I am. Everything is going great in my life. But what about those times when things are not going so great? Those times that we really have to press in to Jesus. Even more, that has to be, not should be, but that has to be our confession. That God, even in this, you can have everything. Father God, even in this, I'm still yours. Even in this, I still love you. I still worship you. I still honor you. Even in this, your love is my heart. My faith and my trust, my confidence is in you. Hallelujah. That even in the midst of the situation, oh God, I give you glory. I still lift my hands. I still praise you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And it's not always easy. It's not always easy. Sometimes you got to press. And you got to press, and you got to press, but know that in the pressing, there is breakthrough. That in the pressing, there is deliverance for you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, God, so don't, don't, don't allow the frustration in the press to keep you from pressing. Don't allow the frustration in the press to keep you from moving. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, God. This morning as, as I was in prayer, this morning as I was in prayer, even before I came to service, before I came to service on this morning, I was praying. I was praying and I was believing not on my own behalf, but I was believing on your behalf. I was believing that God was going to do something supernatural in your life. I was believing that God was going to show himself to you, our covenant partners, in a way that he has never shown himself to you before. And God gave me something that I want to make sure that I give you. I had to hurry up and get my phone and type it up. It says, be instant, in season and out of season. Whether the time of your life is favorable or unfavorable. How many of you, you've had some unfavorable times in your life? I have. I've had some times that have been unfavorable. But just as Paul told Timothy, we have to keep pressing. We will not allow our situations to dictate our faith, our praise, our joy, or our life. For this is a moment of time, in time, and we have to trust that God is well managing our lives. Amen? That God is well managing our lives. That this is just a period of time in time. How many of you know that time changes? Seasons change. Circumstances change. Amen. So we got to keep moving. We got to keep pressing. We cannot stand still and just wait. We got to keep going. Amen. Amen. I am believing for you that your faith is not going to fail you. Amen. I got to believe the same thing for myself. Amen. That my faith will not fail me. And it's not. And I'm believing that yours is not going to fail you either. So those of you that are even watching, your faith will not fail. Amen. Glory to God. God is well managing your life. Trust him. Amen. Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. 
those of you that are in the sanctuary, those of you that are online, we want to say welcome to Revealing Truth Ministries Outreach Christian Center Sunday morning worship service. Amen. Thank God that we have an opportunity to hear from God, whether we're in the sanctuary or online. Open your ears, open your hearts, and get ready to receive at this time, we're going to go ahead and turn our attention to the screens as we say our confessions together. Father God, we thank you for the vision of Revealing Truth Ministries, Ocala. We are disciples of Jesus Christ and are committed to reach out with agape love, reclaim through godly deeds, and restore by revealing the truth of God's word, ultimately leading others to a relationship with you. We thank you, Father, that the vision is fulfilled through our mission to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ by promoting family unity, educational development, community outreach, and economic empowerment. And that according to your word, in Jeremiah 33 and 6, you will reveal to us the abundance of peace, prosperity, security, stability, health, healing, and truth. And so it is in heaven, and so we receive it on earth. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God, and we will receive the Jeremiah 33 and 6 type of life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Well, at this time, we're going to go ahead and have our welcome video. Let's go ahead and have our announcement. Attention, ladies, single ladies. On June the 4th, we will be having our second pastor's daughter's meeting at 7 p.m. here at Revealing Truth Ministries. So if you know any lady that um, is seeking to be married, believe in God for a husband in a season of, we don't necessarily like to say singleness because you're not single, you have God. You're whole, amen. amen. So a season of wholeness in the midst of waiting for a husband, please have her to come out on June the 4th at 7 p.m. Pastor will be imparting into um, his daughters and um, friends. United Way of Marion County is preparing for Strong Families Class 11. I want to say... Um, that we had two members, three actually, three covenant partners that just finished the Strong Families Class 10. So let's give it up for Mr. Eric and Miss Ann and Brianna, Deacon Ann and Brianna who just finished that class. <laughs> Amen, and we are looking forward to some great things that are gonna come from that. Um, the registration for the next class, um, the cutoff is June the 25th. So if you know anyone that you believe will benefit from the United Way Strong Families class, I think we have probably had people in the class since the duration 
um, and this is not class 11. Uh, please let us know. Um, there's some more information that will be coming forth about that. And then just a reminder that every second Wednesday is our breakout sessions. I'm so excited to announce starting in June, the women will actually be doing um, – a Bible study. They, we will be doing a Bible study together on the book of Galatians with a book from Jada Edwards. So for those of you that have not yet purchased your books, let's go ahead and do that because uh, we want to make sure that we are ready for the first Wednesday. First Wednesday, not second, first Wednesday, we're actually going to start it. We have gotten permission to do it for six consecutive Wednesday so six weeks amen the women will be coming together for the study on the book of Galatians so I am so excited about that so go ahead get your books and then also just a reminder to invite others take time to share God's love and invite others to experience as well when you invite them when you invite them to church First time guests, whether you are in the sanctuary, please come up at the service. We want to say thank you um, and appreciate you for being with us today. And then those of you that are online, we want to know where are you watching from, even if you're not a first time guest. Where are you watching from? Are you in Ocala? Are you in Atlanta? Are you in South Carolina? We want to hear from you on today. Amen. All right. Well, at this time, we're going to go ahead and welcome back up our praise team. Hallelujah, as they go before God in praise. Praise the Lord, everybody. You can stand to your feet. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Anybody alive in God on today? I said, are you alive in God on today? God, we give you all the praise because we come alive in the river of the Lord. Amen. Can you put your hands on it right here? As we come alive in Jesus, yeah, yeah. Oh, let's lift it up together. There is a river, there is a river, say, where goodness flows. There is a fountain, say, that drowns sorrow. There is an ocean, deeper than fear. The tide is rising, rising. There is a coming, there is a Serving deep, serving deep inside. It's overflowing from where? From the heart of God. The blood of heaven take crashing over us. The tide is rising, rising. Oh, all over the room say, bursting, bursting up from the ground. Say, we feel it. Say, bursting. Say, Say up from the ground, say we can almost say we come alive in the river. Say we come alive. We come alive. Say it all, say we come alive. Oh, somebody praise the Lord right here. If you're coming alive in the river of the Lord, somebody bless Jesus. We're coming alive in the river of the Lord, amen. Oh, let's do it again. Say, there is a river. Say, where goodness flow. There is a fountain that drowns sorrow. There is an ocean deeper than fear. The tide is rising, rising. Oh, lift it up and say, birthday, birthday, birthday. Up from the ground. Say birthday. Birthday, birthday, birthday. Up from the ground, say we feel it. We come up. Say we come alive. Oh, you can move. Say we come alive. We come alive. Say somebody jam right there. Oh, you can bless the Lord in this room if you're coming alive in the river of the Lord. Hey, yeah. Oh, can I declare it right here? Break open prison doors. 
Send of the captive free. Spring up, pull out. Spring up, pull out. Spring up, pull out in me. Say, break open prison doors. Say, send of the captive free. Spring up, pull out. Spring up, pull out. Spring up, pull out in me. Oh, somebody do it again. Say, Break open prison doors. Set up the captive free. Say, spring up a well. Spring up a well. Spring up a well in me. I'll do it again. Break open prison doors. Hey, hey. Set up the captive free. Spring up a well. Spring up a well. Free and poor. Oh, let's do it again. Say, we come alive. We come up. Say, we come alive. Then the river. We come alive. Oh, to clap it over yourself. We come alive. We come alive. Oh, somebody say, we come alive. Because we come alive. We come alive. <laughs> we come alive. Oh, the clever say, break open prison doors. Say, set all the captives free. Spring up a well. Spring up a well. Spring up a well in me. Oh, all over the room say, break open prison doors. Hey, hey. Set on the captive free. Spring up a well. Spring up a well. Spring up a well in me. Hey, we come alive. We come up. We come alive. Say, we come alive. Oh, somebody say, we come alive. We come alive. Say, we come alive. I see you jamming. We come alive. We come alive. Somebody bless the Lord in this room. Oh, you want to jam right there. If you're coming alive in the river of the Lord, somebody do it. Somebody shout Jesus! Hallelujah, hallelujah! Hallelujah! We come alive in the river! You can't be you can't be messing around up there on the edge. You gotta get in the river to come alive. Hallelujah! Glory to God! I'm so glad I know how to come alive in the river. I'm so glad I'm not afraid of the river. I'm so glad that there's strength in the river. I'm so glad that there's peace in the river. There's joy in the river, so I can come alive in the river. How about that? Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 We love you today, oh God. And you know, one of the most exciting things about God that I have found during my walk is that because he's so all-knowing, there's just there's nothing he doesn't know. And he's known us from the beginning of time. So much so that he knows every hair that's numbered on my head, your head, he knows it all. And even more importantly, he knows our name. He knows my name. He knows your name. Isn't that a wonderful thing? You know people all your life, and some of them uh, be calling you everything else but what your name is. <laughs> My, my, my mother has six children. I cl the older she gets, she'll go through all five of them before she get me right. <laughs> but not God. God knows my name. Hallelujah. We're going to go on and lift that up. Hallelujah. Smile. 
it too. Right there, right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know my name. Hallelujah. You know my name. You know my name. And oh, how you walk with me. I love this relationship. Yes, I do. How you talk Just to commune with you. Just to commune with you. Oh, how you tell me. You tell me. You tell me. Come on, seal that with a praise. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, 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 glory. You know my name. How many are glad that he know your name? He knows your name. I don't care how many people might look like you. I don't care how many people like talk like you, but he knows you personally. He knows your name. Woo, son. Ain't no fire can burn me. Ain't no mountain can stop me. No giant. Woo, he holds my hand. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he holds my hand. I will fear no evil because he knows my name. You know my name. Ooh, Lord have mercy. Mm. You know my name. Hallelujah, Jesus. You know my name. Mm, God, thank you, Lord. Okay. Mm -mm. Oh, God.
about Jesus knowing your name. It's something about him knowing you personally. See, when your back was against the wall, couldn't nobody have helped you, but Jesus saved you. Friends walked out and they turned their back on you. Family stabbed you in your back, but Jesus called you by your name. Yeah. Somebody know what I'm talking about. When you've got a personal relationship with God, it don't matter about anything else, but all I know I can look to the hills from which comes my help. All of my help comes from the Lord. For he created the heavens and the earth. And because of him, I move, I breathe, I have my very existence because of my daddy, Jesus. Yeah, no fire can burn me, no mountain can block me. Oh God, okay, we got to move, we got to move, we got to move, we got to my mama. Oh God, I've been sitting down for two weeks. Hallelujah, you know my name. Tamla, he knows your name. 
<laughs> he sees you crying in the midnight hour. He knows that you've been praying. He knows that you've been trusting him. Stand on his word. Stand on his word. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Yeah, sickness all in your body. But today, claim yourself healed. Oh, mountain of sickness can't stand in your way. Giant of depression can't stop your way. Because he is the almighty God. Well, amen. 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 Come on and give God praise. Come on and give God praise. Come on and give God praise. Thank you for watching us. Those of you who are watching us online. Thank you for joining in and tuning in to us on today. We don't take it lightly that we get to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Those of you who are in the sanctuary, God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Amen? Amen. Well, amen. Hallelujah. I'm excited to be here. Are y'all excited to be here? Give God a praise for being in the house. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Well, go ahead and take your seats. We're going to get ready to do the offering. I want you to write those million-dollar checks, those $100,000 checks, amen. I want you to go ahead and, if you haven't already made up your mind what you're going to sow, get it together now because we continue to worship in our giving. We got to continue to worship in our giving. We can't just be worshiping in our emotions and working, but we got to worship in our giving as well, amen. So this is an opportunity that we get to worship God in our giving. Amen? Amen? I'm going to read the word to you. I am so excited about what God is doing in this place. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. He's doing some awesome things, guys. And very soon, I'm going to tell y'all what he's doing, what he has done. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right, well, if you've got your Bibles, I'm going to go ahead and do the offering, so um, turn your Bibles with me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, don't stop worshiping. Uh, giving is worship. Amen. Don't get Solomon here now. It's time to worship the Lord and our giving. Hallelujah. He's been too good for us to be quiet in him. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Turn to Proverbs 21 and 6. Proverbs 21 and 6 is what I'm going to use for today's word. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Proverbs 21 and 6. Thank you, Lord. Proverbs 21 and 6 is there. Say amen. If you're not, say wait. Hallelujah. I think that's what I want. Let me make sure. That's what I want. No, that's not what I want. <laughs> that's not the one I want, sorry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's not the one I want. I want uh <laughs> First Chronicles twenty nine. Let's go to First Chronicles twenty nine. And let's start at verse number one. First Chronicles twenty nine, verse <coughs> number one. If you dare say man, if you not say wait. Amen, amen. First Chronicles 29, verse number 1. And the king David said to all the assembly, Solomon, <coughs> my son, whom alone God hath chosen, is yet younger, tender, and inexperienced. And the work is great, for the palace is not to be for man, but for the Lord God. So I have provided with all of my might for the house of my God, the gold for the things of gold, the silver for the things of silver, the bronze for the things of bronze, Iron for the things of iron, and wood for the things of wood, as well as onyx and barrel stone, stones to be set, stones of antimony, and stones of various colors, and all sorts of precious stones, and marble stones in abundance. Moreover, because I have set my affliction, my affection, somebody say, I've set my affection, set my affection. on the house of my God. So you know when you, when you talk about setting your affection, that means I, I, I love yeah. the Lord and I love the house, so I set my affection. Affection is the emotion that I give. I set my affection, my thoughts, towards the house of the Lord, right? He said, in addition to all that I have prepared for the holy house. He said, so that means that you, when you set your affection for the things of the house, you've got to uh, uh, prepare 
things ahead of time that you're already going to give to the house of God. Amen. Now watch this. He says, I have a private treasure of gold and silver I give for the house of God. Wait, wait, wait. A private treasure. That means everybody don't know about this treasure. This treasure is laid up just specifically for the house of my God. That means that it, it ain't to be shared with everybody, nobody, but the house of my God. Now watch this, watch this. He said, now, it is 3,000 talents of gold, uh, 3,000 talents of gold, gold of Ufer, 7,000 talents of refined silver, and overland the walls of the house, gold for the uses of gold, silver for the uses of silver, and for every work to be done by craftsmen. Now who is who will offer willingly to fill his hands and consecrate it today. Somebody say, I'm going to consecrate it today. <laughs> to the Lord, like one consecrating himself to the priesthood. He said, I want you to offer up it willingly, and I want you to consecrate it like you're getting ready to be a preacher. <laughs> consecrate your gifts unto the Lord. And in verse number six, he said, Then the chiefs and the fathers and the princes of the tribe of Israel and the captains of the thousands and of the hundreds with the rulers of the king's work offered willingly. So the key there is to offer up to God willingly. Amen? Amen. Amen. So you've got your checks written, the million dollar checks, thousand dollar check, hundred thousand dollar check. You've got them written, ready to go. And if you... <coughs> If you're watching us online, you can go ahead and, and you can give too. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We've got four different ways you can give. If you're watching us online, stand to your feet. As we get ready to give, you can sow to us by our Giblify app. You can down, download, locate, download, and donate to Giblify. Locate our logo. You can also give <coughs> through our website at revealingtruthocc.org. You can also give through mailing a check or money or a cashier's check to our P.O. Box at 3001 Southwest College Road, PMB 111, Ocala, Florida, 34474. And then also, if you're here in the, off in the building, you can do it the traditional way. And lastly, you can also bring a church physically, a check physically by the church, or cash, or credit card, whatever you got. You can bring that here to church, and we'll, we'll gladly accept that for the house of the Lord. But we want you to do it willingly. Amen? Amen. <coughs> for God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. All right, all hearts and minds are full of faith. Let's get ready to sow our seed. Amen. Our ushers will serve you. If you need a tithe and offering envelope, raise your hand. The ushers will serve you. I'm not forgotten. He knows my name. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right. All that had the opportunity to give, he knows my name. Everybody had the opportunity to sow your seed. Point your hand towards the offering basket. I'm going to pray over the seed, and we're going to also bless the service, and we're going to keep it moving. Amen? Amen? Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this seed. We thank you that you always give seed to the sower. Yes. So, Lord God, we declare that we are seed sowers, and we are sowers of the seed yes. which you've given to us. So, Lord God, we give it back to you, yes. oh God, to do what you see fit for the upbuilding of your kingdom. Now, Lord God, I pray that you return unto them some uh, 30, 60, 100 fold. God, give it back to them. Yes. In the name of Jesus, Lord, bless the storehouses that they will have more in their house. Bless them to be running over so they become distribution centers and not just warehouses. We thank you, Father God, that we always have to give to you in the name of Jesus. Now, bless this offering. Bless the seed. Bless the seed source that it may be used for your kingdom in the name of Jesus. Now, Father God, I pray that no one under the sound of my voice will sit here in sickness, pain, discomfort, or dis-ease. For your words say you was wounded for our transgression. You were bruised for our iniquity. And the chastisement of our peace are upon you and with your strife. We are healed. So, Lord, we thank you <coughs> that we're healed in every area of our lives. We're healed in our minds, our bodies, our souls, our spirits, our hearts, our relationships, our finances. We're healed in every area of our lives, which equates to nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing broken, because we are the healed protecting our health in the name of Jesus. Now, Father God, I pray that you anoint 
oh God, their ears to hear, their heart to receive, and their spirit to contain your word. It's in the almighty, all-powerful name of Jesus that I pray. All that agree with that prayer say amen. 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 All right, come on, give God praise as you have your seat. Amen, amen, amen. You can have your seat. You can have your seat. Amen, amen. Amen, I'm so glad to be back up. I tell you what, hallelujah. Seems like I've been sitting down for a month. You ain't been but two weeks. Y'all know how that is. Preachers always got something to say. Praise the Lord. So I thank God. And today we're still talking about kingdom business. Turn it to neighbor. Kingdom business is what it's all about. Amen. We're talking about kingdom business. Amen. I believe today we're going to conclude this. This is kingdom business part six. We're going to conclude today um, with kingdom business. Amen. So I want you to get these nuggets that God has prepared, and I'm going to tell you I've got a lot of scriptures to give you, so you might write faster than I talk, or you, I might talk faster than you write, but get them down. Amen. Because I need you to go back and read them. Amen. Amen. All right. We are also endeavoring, amen, again, to open our um, children's um, section. So we're going to be opening on the third um, Sunday. We're going to open one Sunday a month for right now until we can develop uh, back to the, the numbers we used to have and develop, get, getting our youth back in it, the, um, the business of coming back to the house of God. Amen? Amen. So though you have your kids at home, start bringing them back. Don't be leaving at home with, with Nene then. It's time for them come on back to the house. <coughs> they don't be on coronation for long enough. Amen. All right? So bring the kids on back to the house. They need, the, they need some wood from the Lord. Yeah. Amen? Amen. <coughs> and so we open our um, nursery a couple of months ago, so ne uh, this month or next month on the third Sunday, we're going to be opening our um, teen section and our and the middle school section. We're going to probably combine them first and get another number, and then we'll break them out into their own section. So that's the goal. So tell your teens, tell their friends, it's time for them to come on back to church. Yeah. Turn to the neighbor. neighbor. Our, children our children are off, off. coronation. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you know, took too, too much time off the kids. Ain't got to go. Ain't nothing happening. This is an adult church. Ain't nothing for us. But we got something for everybody in all ages. Amen. We got our deacons re uh, prepared. They're ready to serve. Amen. We got uh, uh, people in place ready to serve them. So bring them back. Amen. Amen. As I continue to do more um, at the high school, I'm going to be more inundated with Westport. I think I told you we do more at Westport High School as we begin to make our presence known there. We're going to do one school at a time. We're going to do Westport, then we're going to go to Liberty. Amen. Amen. Then we go to Liberty, we're going to saturate Liberty, then we're going to go to Hammock Bowen. We're going to saturate Hammock Bowen. There's too many. These three schools around here, we can take them by storm. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to get in the door, and, 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 and y'all got to be ready when they come. Brother Flood ain't going to come. Uh -oh. All right? I'm going to go inspire the land. <laughs> so somebody got to go and come back with a good report. That'd be me. Amen, amen. All right, <coughs> so kingdom business. Turn to say, neighbor, kingdom business is good business. I have decided that I will take care of kingdom business. Amen, amen. So we started this series talking about your time, your talent. And now we're um, concluding this series talking about your treasure. And I know that a lot of times when you talk about money, people clam up, get quiet on you. And, and, and some people even stop coming to church because you talk about money. But the truth of the matter is, I don't know anybody that I know that don't need money. Y'all know some people that don't need money? Y'all need some y'all know some people that say money evil? They don't want none of their evil money? I about to say, tell them bring it on to the house. <laughs> bring it to the house of God. You, your money evil, bring bring it to the house. We can pray over it and be good. <laughs> what you say? <laughs> Hallelujah. So, so our base scripture coming from this series is Colossians chapter 3 and verse 23 and 24. If you'll go there with me. Colossians chapter 3, verse 23 and 24. Amen. Real soon, I thank God, we're also going to be having some graduates out of our new covenant partners class. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. They've been in covenant partners class and have gone through. Amen. And they're going to be ready to go to do work of ministry. So the, the covenant partners class is give you license to serve. So once the day I give you that certificate, the, the next day I want you to serve <laughs> We give it to you on Sunday, you start serving on Monday. <laughs> All right. So Colossians chapter 3. <clears throat> and let's start at verse number 23 and 24. If you're there, say amen. If you're not, say wait. Amen. Colossians chapter 3, and I'm reading from the Amplified, and we'll show it to you in the Message Bible as well. It says, 
Whatever may be your task. <clears throat> you know what a task is? Task is something that you've been given to do, an assignment. So whatever we can substitute task as in whatever may be your assignment, work at it heartily from the soul. When you work at something from your soul, man, it comes from down in your bowels, down in your belly. He said work at it from your soul, right? And when you work at it from your soul, watch this, as something done for the Lord and not for men. When you work at it from down on the inside, you don't care if somebody give you a pat on the back. I'm not doing it for man's accolades. I'm doing it as unto the Lord. And so when we're handling God's business, we've got to have that attitude. I don't care if they never call my name. I don't care if they never promote me. I'm doing this as unto the real master, which is the Lord. Are you listening to me? Now I go on that says, knowing with all certainty that it is from the Lord and not from men, that you will receive the inheritance, which is your real reward. The one whom you are actually serving is the Lord Christ, the Messiah. So turn this to neighbor. I'm actually serving the Lord God. He is the Messiah. So let's get that straight. I'm serving the Messiah. Let's see what it says in the Message Bible. Work from the heart for your real master, for God. Confident that you will get paid in full when you come into your inheritance. Keep in mind always that the ultimate master you're serving is who? Christ. Amen. Amen. And so today I've got three, my assignment is to give you three things uh, that I want you. Three things and then at the end I'm going to give you eight things. So I got three and eight. So where did that? Let me, okay. All right. Y'all, man, y'all, y'all, okay. All right. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to talk to you first about when you decide to sow your seeds into the kingdom of God, first of all, I'm going to say this. Failure to sow tithes hinders the flow of the grace of God to you in areas of finances. Failure to sow into the kingdom, tithes and offerings, hinders the flow of the grace of God to you in the area of finances. So when you're trickling in finances, a little dab, uh, uh, do you every now and then, and you find yourself constantly having more month than money, God is going to give you grace because he's given all of us the grace, like he's given us all of us the measure of faith. But when you're hesitant to do your part, you hinder the flow. <clears throat> so I want to make that plain. If I was you, I would not hinder the flow because it's going to flow with or without you. But you can, you can make it flow like he planned it, or you can slow up the flow. It's all become your choice. And that has to do with your seed, which is your tithes and your offerings. When you know that the Bible says in the book of Genesis, as long as there's heaven and earth, there'll be seed, time, and harvest. But when you don't seed, and then wait on time, you are delaying your harvest. Are oh, y'all listening to me? So so many times, everybody, I want it now. Give me, give me, give me, Lord. I got it, got it, got it. Give me, give me, give me. I got it, got it, got it. Give me, give me, give me. And he's saying, where's your seed? Where's your seed? I told you last time that you couldn't just tie, you couldn't just tie your time because the reality of it is he's giving you 168 hours a week. And if you're to tie your time, you should be tied in 17 hours a week. Yeah. Y'all remember I said that? So when people talk about, I thought, Pastor, you can tie your time. You can tie your time in addition to your money, M-O-N-E-Y. It ain't, it, ain't, it ain't either or. It's in addition to. Because your time can't pay the light bill in the church. Your check can. Your cashier's check can. Oh, y'all listen to me. Well, Pastor, you talking about money. Yeah, I'm talking about it because I'm tired of... Okay, I ain't going to say that. I'm going to keep going. We teach here. Give it in the following manner. Sow your 10%, which is a tithe. Pay yourself 10%. And then pray and ask God for the wisdom to live off the aid. That's what we teach here. So if you're sowing your tithe consistently, not when you think you got enough to do it. Well, Pastor, I ain't making enough hours this week because I ain't, ain't going to sow my tithe. That doesn't mean your tithe, your tithe is less than what it normally is. It don't mean it's zero. 
Zero is nothing. Are y'all listening to me? And when you begin to pay yourself, the goal is to pay yourself 10%. But if your faith's not there, pay yourself 1%, 2%, and then give yourself a raise. Get up to 10. That's your goal. Because some of you don't trust paying yourself. That's why you're broke. But we cursing that spirit. We cursing that broke poor spirit up in here. We ain't going to be broke another day in our life. We declare we are the righteousness of God. So money coming to us now in the name of Jesus. We cursing that old spirit. It's a spirit. Brokenness and poorness is a spirit. And you have the power to break that impoverished spirit. Are you listening to me? Tithe 10%. Pay yourself 10%. And ask God for the wisdom to live off the 80. Try it, because some of y'all ain't tried it. Pastor, I've been here, and I've been here five years, and I try it every now and then. But, Pastor, when it get tight, I just find myself getting more mo- than money, and, Pastor, the church come last, man, Pastor, I got to pay my bills. Don't you know I got to pay my bills? If I don't pay my bills, I ain't going to have no lights on. Amen. So then what you do, you go borrow the rest to pay your bills when you didn't have enough in the first place. So go ahead and make what you lack and make that a seed and sow it to the kingdom and watch God give you the increase. See, that's a different way of thinking. Because the way we normally think is, if I ain't got enough, I got to do it. Well, that's your problem. You've been trying to do it. God said, trust me and see if I won't open up the window of heaven, pull you out of blessing, you won't have room to Try me and see. I'm a bad God. I can back up everything, I promise you. Try me and see. Are y'all listening to me? See, I'm not talking what I think I know. I'm talking what I know from experience. I've had some broke days. I've had some cars repossessed. I've had some houses foreclosed. But God, (laughs) he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all, I can ask or think according to the power that worketh in me. And when I put seed in the ground, I activate my power. So y'all listen to me. So we ain't got, got, ain't no more excuses. Turn to the neighbor, no more excuses. We believe in God for 100% tithers in this ministry. And we declare that it is done today. Give God praise. I'm telling you, I know what God can do. And I know the testimony of people who was doing it. They tell me all the time, Pastor, when I was doing that, yeah, when you stopped, what happened? Somewhere along the way, it's a lack of faith. Because when you don't sow, that says your faith is lacking. In fact, let me just give you a story before I get to the word of God. Are y'all still listening? When Peter got out of the boat, it was Peter's faith that caused him to get out of the boat. Because notice, Peter didn't pray. Lord, should I come? He said, no, Lord, if that's you, bid me to come. And God said, Jesus said, come. Right? But Peter had enough faith to take a step to get out of his comfort zone, which was in the boat. And to get out of the boat in water that was bolstering and the winds that were blowing high, he had enough faith. Now God and Jesus and his infinite self, he could have said, Peter, did you pray? Did you, did you ask me to come? Oh, Peter, what you doing? You out there by yourself? Now, Peter, I ain't telling you to come. You, you should have thought about that before you got out of that boat. God didn't say that. I guess he could have. So what am I saying? Any mistake that you make, God can correct it. Come on, somebody. So even though Peter got out of the boat, God said, I'm coming to get you. Oh, Peter, you have little faith. And then when he got him to safety, he then hushed the storm. And they said, oh, my God, you are the son of God. What matter of man in this that even the wind obey? Come on, somebody. That's who we know. That's who we trust. That's who we Give glory and honor to the same God that gives you the same Jesus that gives you seed to sow into his kingdom. All right, yeah, okay. Why do we give our tithe? Why should I tithe? Pastor, I mean, so many times I've been in church, why should I tithe? God bless me anyway. <laughs> ain't got to give you, ain't got to give him nothing. I heard people say that God going to bless me when I get him not. Y'all anybody heard people say that? I have. Because they truly believe that. And he will bless you. What I said is that you're going to slow down the flow. He blessed those that understand. You know why? Because he has grace. 
and mercy. He said, you are ignorant. You don't know enough. So I'm not going to charge it against you. But when you know the truth, you shall know the truth. And it's the truth that sets you free. So if you've been going in your life and you've been talking about, I got to get my dues. Ain't no one in the Bible that said, give your dues to tithes. I know I'm, I'm building my foundation, so don't look at me and shoot me down. Don't shoot me down now. Because some of y'all are like, will you get to the point? I see y'all. I see y'all. And remember, y'all are looking at me. I see y'all. I see all y'all. Deuteronomy 14. Let me give you some word then, because y'all don't believe me. Let me give you some word on it. Pastor Corey says it at Pastor Corey's church when I was there. They said, put some word on it, Pastor. I said, okay, I'm going to put some word on it. I was there teaching a couple of years ago. They said, put some word on it. I said, it's Pastor Corey church here. I'm going to put some word on it. Go to Deuteronomy. Why should I tithe? Tithe is a way of teaching us that God must be our priority. The one purpose of tithing is to teach us to always Put God first in our lives. Deuteronomy 14. If you're there, say amen. If you're not, say wait. Amen. amen. Deuteronomy 14. I'm going to start at verse number 22. 14 and 22. I'm getting there in a minute, y'all. Hold on. I've got too many pages. 14 and 22. Everybody there? He said... You will surely tithe all the yield of your seeds produced by your field each year. Now, during this time in the law, they tithe of cattle. They tithe off their animals and all of their farm um, um, things. So, so back then, they did not have money like we have today. So, but, but, but watch this. Watch what they did. And you shall eat before the Lord your God in the place in which he will call his name and his presence to dwell the tithe tenth of your grain, your new wine, your oil, and your firstling of your herd and your flock, that you may learn reverently to fear the Lord your God always. He said, so I, I called them to give a tenth of their cattle. And then he said, I want you to bring the tenth to a place that I will show you, and then you eat that tenth in the place that I've designated. So what is God saying? How does that relate to, common, to, to natural day vernacular? Well, he said, bring me all the tithes in my house, that there be me meat in my house, right? So he said, everything, your tenth, belongs to him, and I'm going to show you the place where my glory resides, where you are to sow it. So when you come to the house of God and you have been led to that house of God that God directed you to, that's the place you eat from the tent that you've sown. God, help me, help me. So the problem is this. You've been going places that God ain't told you to go. And so you wonder why my tent is not working for me when I'm out of place. But they took their tent of the herd and sent to the sanctuary that God designated for it to go. Amen. What are you saying, Pastor? Some people are out of place. Some people are sowing into ground they shouldn't be. So you got to ask the Lord, Lord, is this where you want me to sow my tithe? Is this what you want me to sow my seed into this ground and wait on your instruction to receive the food from the mantle of the man and woman of God that is coming for to feed my house? Amen. Amen. Are y'all listening to me? Amen. Amen. So if you are lacking, then you've got to understand or ask yourself, am I truly connected? Or am I sitting on the outskirts looking in? Because when you're connected to the power source, the power got to come on. But when you're sitting on the outside, the power won't work until you plug in. So, Pastor, I've been coming to this church for four and a half years, and I ain't seen no difference. Well, then you have to ask yourself, am I plugged in? Or am I just attending? Am I committed? Or am I just going? Okay, yeah, it's going to be heavy today. I told you, I've been sitting down for two weeks. Let's see what Deuteronomy says right here. Let me show you something. Watch this. 
he says, make an offering of 10%, a tithe of all the produce which grows in your fields year after year. God allows you to get revenue into your house year after year. Keep going. Bring, bring this into the presence of God, watch this, your God, at the place he designates for worship, and there eat the, tent, the tithe from your grain, wine, and oil, and the firstborn from your herds and flocks. In this way, you will learn. Somebody say, I got to learn. You will learn to live in deep reverence before God, your God, as long as you live. He says, so bring it to the place that I designate, and you will learn to depend on me the rest of your life. Are you listening to me? So why do we tithe? Why do we tithe? Because it's a commandment. We should tithe because the tithe teaches us how to depend on God. That's what it's all about, trusting in God. That's what the tithe teaches. And one thing about my God, he ain't going to make you do nothing. He know your name. <laughs> he know your name. He know your name generosity or your name stingy. He know your name. He know if you're going to give in abundance or you're always giving in lack. He know your name. God ain't never surprised by what you do. He already know before you do it. He know what you're going to do. He made you. So if you want to know the purpose of a thing, don't ask the thing, ask the creator of the thing. God is the creator of you and me. And as I told the men on, on Wednesday night, we're created in his image. So when you're created in the image of God, you're created in the very essence of God. And so that when you're created in the essence of God, everywhere you go, people see God. So the question becomes, how are people seeing God in me? Do people see God as a stingy God or a generous God? Do they see people, do they see God as a loving God or a hateful God? Do they see God as a, a, as a God of grace and mercy or a God of a strife? And I'm going to get you, sucker. What are you showing people when they see you show up? Because the reality is everywhere I go, God shows up. Oh, what a responsibility to be in the kingdom of God. When I show up, God's right there with me. I walk in the door, oh, here come God. The devil start to tremble. Here come God. He walking in here in his child. Here he comes. He's the essence of the image of God. Oh, y'all listen to me. All right. Let's keep going. Y'all getting something out of here so far? Why do we tithe? Why? Because Jesus taught and endorsed tithing. Let's look at Matthew, chapter 23. And I want to start at verse 23. And what Jesus was doing, he was warning against religious fashion shows. See, in this chapter, people, uh, uh, the, the Pharisees was, was very religious in putting on fashion shows and doing things to be seen of men. They had super spirit, superficial spiritual presence. And so God is showing us how to have genuine Humility. So Matthew 23, if you're there, say man. If you're not, say wait. Matthew 23, and verse number 23. And I'm going to start at, at oh man. sorry, y'all. Who else says that? Matthew 23, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I forgot what I just said. Jesus, got so much in here, so many scriptures. Matthew uh, 23 and 23, he says, and I like the King, uh, the Amplified, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you pretenders, you hypocrites. That's why people say in, in the church, it's, I ain't going to church because there's so many hypocrites in there. And your response is, there's room for one more, come on. <laughs> come on in. We got enough room for you and me too, come on in here. We're going to get this thing right together. Don't let them give you that excuse. That's an excuse. But what Jesus said, he said, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you pretenders, you hypocrites. For you give, watch this, a tenth of your mint and deal in cumin and have neglected and omitted the weightier, the more important matters of the law, right, 
and justice and mercy and fidelity. These you ought particularly to have done without neglecting the others. So what he's saying is, yeah, y'all focus only on giving your tithe and your offerings, but you don't care nothing about people. You have no mercy. You have no compassion. But you want to be seen. When you come in, in fact, one translation says, the scribes and Pharisees like to sit at tables of the head of the tables with their phylacteries on, showing everybody, I'm a scribe. I'm a Pharisee. Look at me. I'm Jesus' baby. Look at me. God is my daddy. Look at me. But you, he said, woe unto you, you hypocrites. You're pretending. He said, because you want to be seen of men, you will never get my reward. You got your reward. When they say, you look good, well, you're wearing that suit. <laughs> you're looking good. Yeah, you're wearing that dress. You got your reward. At least if you take it that way. It's okay to give a compliment. Let me correct it, because some of y'all get, get it all twisted. I, I said, it's okay to get a compliment, though you're watching us online. It's okay. Let somebody compliment you. You got to look good. The man that finds is a wife. Finds a good thing. You got to be looking good. Okay. Let me get back behind the podium. I want y'all to throw stuff at me. <laughs> and then watch verse number 24. <laughs> he says, you blind guides filtering out a gnat and gulping down a camel. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, pretenders, hypocrites, for you clean the outside of the cup and of the plate, but within they are full of extortion, prey, spoil, plunder, and grasping self-indulgence. He says, so y'all clean out the outside, but your inside is messed all up. You know how when your children wash dishes, they clean the outside of the lid and never, never wash the inside of the cup, so you're looking at you still got Kool-Aid in the bottom? Yeah. <laughs> still got stains from what you saw. So he said, you see the stains left over because you only wanted people to see on the outside and not look on the inside. He said, you pretenders. And watch this. He said, you blind Pharisees, first clean the inside of the cup and of the plate so that the outside may be clean also. In other words, start on the inside and work your way out on the outside, not the opposite, not on the outside and leave the inside unclean. Let's look at what it says in, in the Message Bible. Watch this. I like the way it says in the Message. You're hopeless. You religion scholars and Pharisees, you're frauds. You keep meticulous account books, tithing on every nickel and dime you get, but on the meat of God's law, things like fairness and compassion and commitment, the absence, the absolute basics, you carelessly take it or leave it. Careful bookkeeping is commendable, but the basics are required. He said, I'm requiring you to love. I'm requiring you to do other things. But you got an attitude, take it or leave it. You keep your books meticulous. I guarantee you, some of y'all know how much in the bank account right now. I guarantee you, you even got banking online or you got a check, but you know what's in that account right now. But God said you keep very meticulous accounts of those, but then you don't do the basics, which is loving your neighbor, caring for those that I've called you to care about. Let's go. Keep going. Do you have any idea how silly you look writing a life story that's wrong from the start to finish? Nitpicking over commas and semicolons. You grammar critic, you. <laughs> Worry about how I'm writing you all this and your life messed up, jacked up from the flow up, but you got the audacity to tell me you missed that comma, you missed that semicolon. Man, please, get up, get somewhere. You're hopeless. you religion scholars and Pharisees. You're frauds. You burnish the furnace of your cups and bowls so they sparkle in the sun while the insides are maggoty with your greed and gluttony. Get a picture of that. Maggots on the inside. But you don't clean that on the outside. So what he's saying is you calling everybody else what you see, but you're neglecting to clean out your own inside, which is your heart. Somebody say, help me, Jesus. Is that it? That one. Stupid Pharisees. He called them stupid. It's in the Bible. He said, you stupid Pharisees. Score the insides, and then 
the gleaming surface will mean something. God ain't playing. See y'all with y'all stupid selves. <laughs> Don't be stupid. <laughs> y'all, y'all all right? I'm gonna keep going. Let's go then. Go. Let's, let's look, look at Luke, 40, uh, Luke chapter 11, verse 42 through 44. Luke chapter 11. Let's look at verse 42 through 44. Are you there? If you dare say amen. If you're not, say wait. All right, Luke chapter 11. He says it again, but I like the way Luke, this is the account of Luke saying this. He said, but woe to you, Pharisees, for you tithe mint and rue and every little herb, but disregard and neglect justice and the love of God. These you ought to have done without leaving the others undone. Woe to you, Pharisees, for you love the best seats. Here it is, in the synagogue. You love to sit on the front row in the church. You love to come in church, I'm, 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 I'm so-and-so. Don't you see he, me? Let me come in. And like I told y'all folks, sometimes fashionably late and come right down the aisle and sit on the front row. Don't do that here. I'm going to call you out. You better sit in the back. What you doing coming down the aisle? <laughs> I won't say that. I'm kidding. I ain't saying it. But he said, woe to you. Pharisees, for you love the best seats in the synagogue, and you love to be greeted and bow down to in the public marketplace. So you love the people to serve you. You love for people to, 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 to admire your titles and the things you have. He said that's what y'all do and let you get your reward known by people in the public. But then he said, woe to you, for you are like graves, which are not marked or seen. And men walk over them without being aware of it and are cemeterially defiled, ceremonially defiled. One of the experts in the Messianic law answered him, Teacher, in saying this, you reproach and outrage and affront even us. He said, yeah, I ain't scared, y'all. I'll let you know what time to Let's see what it says in the Message Bible. Are y'all getting something out of this so far? We're still talking about your seed, your tithes and offerings, your, 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 your treasures. Why do we tie? Why do we give it? Because God gave us instructions. So let's go. Let's see what it says in the message. I've had it with you. Wait, wait a minute. They don't make God mad. I'm about to say another word. <laughs> I'm about to say they don't piss God off. Well, let me say that. Say that I had it with y'all. You hopeless. You Pharisees. You frauds. You keep meticulous account books, tithing on every nickel and dime you get, but manage to find loopholes. You got an excuse. There's a way out. Oh, yeah, Pastor, I know you said that, but I got it this way. I got out. I got away. He said, but you find loopholes for getting around basic matters of justice and God's love. Careful bookkeeping is commendable, but the basics are required. This is Luke's account, the same thing. You see the same thing? This is what Luke said. Keep going. You're hopeless, you Pharisees. You're frauds. Now, notice he keeps saying you're hopeless and you're a fraud. That means... <laughs> You won't hope, but you're really hopeless. You're hopeless because you're doing things to get credit of your own, and you're really stealing my glory. You're hopeless because you do the matters that make you look good, but you're not worried about how people see me in you. You're hopeless because I need people to come running to Jesus, to run into me, to say, what must I do to be saved? But you sit here flaunting your stuff. Get front seats in the church. Won't everybody call you a uh, mister or deacon or elder or pastor or whatever you by your title, but you are hopeless because you want something for nothing. He said, well, go back, go back. You love sitting at the head table at church dinners. <laughs> Anybody know that? That's that, that my seat right there. Did you, didn't you see that reservation card? That's my name right there. You're at the head of the seat. You love preparing yourselves in the radiance of public flattery. Go ahead. Frauds, you're just like unmarked graves. People walk over that nice grassy surface, never suspecting the rot and corruption that's in six feet under. Are y'all hearing this? This is the book. I ain't saying this. I'm just showing y'all. Why do we tie? What is God saying? He's saying to you, do it for real. Don't be like the Pharisees. This is a warning. He said, woe to you hypocrites. It's enough of them. Be real. And give it from your heart. 
Give God praise. Give God praise right there. Come on, give God praise. Let's look at Luke. No, no, no. Let's look at, yeah, let's look at Luke, chapter 18. And I want this from the easy read version. Let me show y'all this. Luke, chapter 18, verse 9. I'm going to read it from the Amplified, and we're going to show it an easy read on the screen. Are you there? Luke, chapter, what did I say? Is that right? Let me see. Yeah, the Luke 18? Okay, that's what I said. Y'all try to make me doubt what I said. Wait a minute. I'm confused. Don't be confusing me. Luke 18, and let's look at verse number 9 through 14. You there? Say amen. Not say wait. And he also told this parable to some people who trusted in themselves and were confident that they were righteous, that they were upright and in right standing with God, and scorned and made nothing of all the rest of men. Two men went up to the temple in closure to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee took his stand. What's that? Ostentatiously, thank you. Okay. And began to pray thus before and with himself. God, I thank you that I'm not like the rest of men. Extortioners, robbers, swindlers, unrighteousness in heart and life, adulterers, or even like that tax collector there. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I gain. But the tax collector, merely standing at a distance, would not even lift his eyes to heaven, but keep stri um, striking his breast, saying, Oh God, be favorable, be gracious, be merciful to me, the especially wicked sinner that I am. In verse 14, I tell you, this man went down to his home, justified, forgiven, and made right, and in right standing with God rather than the other man, for uh, everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. But he who humbles himself will be what? Exalted. Watch it in the easy read. We'll talk about why we're tired. There are some people who thought they were very good and looked down on everyone else. Jesus used this story to teach them. One time there was a Pharisee and a tax collector. One day they both went to the temple to pray. The Pharisee stood alone, away from the tax collector. When the Pharisees prayed, he said, Oh God, I thank you that I'm not like, and I'm not as bad as other people. I'm not like men who steal, cheat, or commit adultery. I thank you that I am better than this tax collector. Now look at him. He's sitting here supposed to be praying, and he's judging the, he judging the tax. How many of y'all know people like that? I'm all that and a bag of chips. You ain't nothing. So God said, I'm going to use this parable to show you. Watch this. Watch what he says. I, he said, the Pharisees, I fast twice a week, and I give a tenth of everything I get. Okay. The tax collector stood alone, too. But when he prayed, he would not even look up to heaven. He felt very humble before God. He said, oh, God, have mercy on me, for I am a sinner. Watch this. I like this. The tax collector, I tell you. Go, go, go keep on. I tell you, when this man finished his prayer and went home, he was right with God. See, the tax collector said, I ain't trying to get nothing else. All I want, God forgive me for the wrong that I've done. Lord, help me. And the Bible says he went home right with God. But the Pharisee who felt that he was better than others, who looked down his nose at everybody else, he was not right with God. People who make themselves important will be made humble. But those who make themselves humble will be made important. Good God from Zion. Come on and give God. If you make yourself humble, you will be made important. What's the those? Y'all know people like that that are always trying to one up on you. I, I got a story, but I got one better. <laughs> Child, let me tell you something. We, we needed 100,000. Gary, we needed 125. We got ours. <laughs> always got a one up. Shut up! He said, the one who's not looking for praise. The one who's not patted itself on his own back. The one who said, Lord, forgive me, for I'm a sinner. Lord, help me, because I know I've done wrong. He said, that man will go home in right standing with God. God said, I'm using this as an example for those of us who are in the church, 
who think you better than somebody else, who toot down your nose at the drunk, who toot up your nose at the adulteress, who toot up your nose at the prostitute, who toot up your nose at the one that's trying to get it right with God because you've been so right all of your life. You're looking down on them. But he said, what you are saying won't even reach my ear. The one that coming in him who downtrodden, the one that's a sinner, the one said, Lord, here I am. That's the one that's going to be made right with me. That's the one who's going to enter into my kingdom. That's the one that I give it all to and again. But there's so many people that come to church every Sunday. Every year in and year out, and you toot up your nose like you all that. But we need to be an example because the world is hurting. The world is out there. They need to show us. We need to show Jesus to the world. Corona has destroyed people's lives. He said, I'm waiting on the church to stand up and be the light of this world. You are like a city that cannot be hidden. I have called you to come forth out of those grave clothes. Lazarus, come forth. My church. Come forth out of the grave. It's time to be the light of this world. I've called you to make disciples of men. But you sitting here trying to make a name for yourself. How dare you, you fraud? How dare you, hypocrite? He said, I need you to be out there being the light of this world. We got to save lives. We got people to save. We got people that really need to know who I am. How are you representing me? Oh, Rabbi Shiki, how are you representing me? So if you go about making a name for yourself, you got a name, Mr. Big Shot. Miss Glamour Girl, you got a name. You got your name right here on earth. He said, but time out for that, you're a hypocrite. I need people to see, to be humble. So if you're made humility and you're humble, I will make you important. See, you ain't got to go in there and try to get an a, a invitation to the governor's mansion. I'll make a way for the governor to invite you. You ain't got to go and try to rub nose with the senators and, and the commissioner. I'll make sure they come to you because you have made yourself humble and I will make you important. Amen. Give God praise. Give God praise. All right. All right. All right. I'm almost, I'm, I'm getting somewhere. I'm just laying this foundation. I'm just trying to get, get, get through here. Y'all all right? Let's go to Luke chapter 20. Luke chapter 20, verse 25. He said, render unto Caesar what belong to Caesar. Luke 20 and 25. Let's turn over a couple, of, a couple more pages. Luke 20 and 25, watch this. He said to them, then render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things of God. But before that, go to verse actually 19. The scribes and the chief priests desired and tried to find a way to arrest him at the very hour, but they were afraid of the people, for they discerned that he had related this parable against them. So they watched for an opportunity to ensnare him and sent spies who pretended <laughs> to be upright, honest, and sincere that they might lay hold of something he might say as to turn him over to the control and authority of the government. They asked him, teacher, we know that you speak and teach what is right. See, they know he teach what is right. They know he was the right man. They ain't never heard the way God teaches. Jesus taught him. He said, we know you teach what is right. He said, and, they, and that you show no partiality. He said, God, you just bring it real to everyone, but teach the way of God honestly and in truth. It is lawful for us to give tribute to Caesar or not. So should we give Caesar what belonged to him? And Jesus watched this. He said, but he recognized. Somebody said Jesus recognized. He recognized you trying to trap him. He recognized you trying to do your own stuff. Jesus recognized. He recognized and understood their cunning and unscrupulousness and said to them, show me a denaro. In other words, show me a coin. Whose image and inscription does it have? They answered Caesar's. He said to them, then render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. He said, Y'all trying to trick me, but what does it say? But I ain't never seen nobody arguing with the government. You better get my taxes and my check. <laughs> I better bring home more than that, that net. It better be my gross on my check. I ain't never heard nobody say that. That belongs to Caesar and you ain't giving it. He take it. So God said honor and give to Caesar what Caesar's. So why do we have a problem of giving God what belongs to him? Caesar don't give you a choice. God does. Caesar don't ask you, do you want to? They take it. In other words, Caesar robbed you in your face. 
God said, I'm asking you as a gentleman, give me mine. That belonged to me. I gave you a hundred. Give, give, just give me a dime. Oh, y'all listen to me. I want y'all to really understand this. But Caesar ain't asked you for nothing. He said, I'm taking it in your face. And I dare you to say something. You owe this to me. I'm your Uncle Sam you ain't never met. I'm Uncle Sam, I got, and you got an aunt named Sally. Uncle Sam and Aunt Sally, we both know your name. You owe us. Anybody that went to school to know Aunt, aunt Sally? <laughs> the, 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 that's them long, Sally Mae. That's what I'm talking about. She, she, that's her name, Aunt Sally. <laughs> Uncle Sam and Aunt Sally. They ain't nowhere near can you, but they get everything off the top. You won't have nothing to keep fooling with them two. They're going to take your income tax. They might put a leather against your house. You don't own nothing, come Uncle Sam and Aunt Sally. They bad. But I don't see nobody standing in the government line fussing with Sally and Sam. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody doing that. All right, man, it's yours. Oh, I know it's mine. You ain't had to tell me. Look at your check. I got it. <laughs> you ain't got to ask me for it. Look at your check. It's missing some money. <laughs> you made $10.99, you're going to bring home 938 I got mine. That's what it is, right? So don't, don't, you ain't got to ask me. But God said, give me what belongs to me freely, willingly, from your heart. That's why we should tithe. Hallelujah. Tithe supports the gospel. Go to 1 Corinthians. I'll, I'm not going to have time to read that because I want to get you to, uh, but, but, but 1 Corinthians, I'll paraphrase, 1 Corinthians 9, 13 to 14. It said those who work and, 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 and toil with the gospel should live off the gospel. That's what that says. So some of y'all have a problem giving to your preacher, giving to the house of God. Well, you know what? Keep it. We're going to be all right. I'm just saying. But we want you to be blessed. And it says this in the word. So it's the word for you to give to your man and woman of God. I didn't even start teaching about how you honor your, your man and your woman of God. I'm going to bring somebody else in and do that. I don't want y'all to shoot me down. Y'all might throw stuff, tomatoes and stuff at me. I had to get security. I got security in here. Y'all don't know. He ain't playing. Get near me if you want to. Got a Peter sitting right near me. He's going to cut your ear off. He ain't playing. He packing. Come near me just if you want to. Got a 45 at his side. Don't play. I got, I, I got them all over this building. Y'all let you know, come with your pet try if you want to. Somebody going to clip you coming that way. Somebody going to hook you that way. Hey, don't try. <laughs> Pastor, what you telling that for? I just want y'all to know. I just want y'all to know because I'm saying this stuff so y'all don't come after me. <laughs> so I'm just saying I got protection in the house. So don't, don't try. Don't come near me now. All right. <laughs> come on, give God praise. Give God praise. Y'all give somebody. This. So, 1 Corinthians, and I'm almost done. 9, 13 through 14. Read that when you get home. I want you to look at that. All right. And then in Matthew 25 through 4, uh, 14 through 30, that talks about the talents. And we used to think about the talent talking about your real talent, but talents is talking about money. Because he talks about he gave one, uh, one talent, one five talent, and one ten. He said the one that hid the talent, he took that which away from him and gave it to the one that had five, so he had double. So God said, when you try to hide, what I allow you, I'm going to take that what you have and give it to somebody else, and they're going to have abundance. All right. Last scriptures I'm going to talk to. I'm going to talk to you about the titles right. Go to Malachi chapter 3. And I'm going to end with this. Malachi chapter 3. Y'all all right today? Amen. Turn and say, neighbor, Amen. we're talking about Amen. kingdom business. Amen. 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 Malachi chapter 3. I know you don't talk about money ain't never fun, but I'm trying to get y'all to get it. We ain't going to be broke up in here. Man, we're going to be blessed beyond measures. When people look at this ministry, they're going to say, how in the world y'all did that? We trust God. Amen. You look at five years and what God has allowed us to do in five years. Come on, somebody. Nothing but the grace of God. Nothing that we've done, it's God. Because we seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And he said everything else shall be added. Amen. All right. What did I tell you how to go? Malachi. Malachi 3. I tell you what. This one here, I tell you, when I was in church, they scared us with this one. They scared us straight. Start at verse 6. Start at verse 6. Are you there? We're going to show it to you in the Amplified then in the, in the message. He said, for I am the Lord. I do not change. That is why you, O sons of Jacob, are not consumed. He said, I have grace and I have mercy. What he just said here. I don't change. He said, because you don't do what I ask you to do, I'm not going to change who I am. 
I'm not going to stop loving you. I'm not going to stop providing for you. I'm not going to stop giving you. But what will happen if you decide that you want to walk away from me, you hinder the flow of the grace and mercy I'm still going to give to you. It's just going to come trickling versus bursting first. Four. So how do you want the grace? How do you want his mercy? Do you want it trickling or do you want it bursting forth? He said, I am the Lord. I don't change. That is why you are not, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Verse 7, even from the days of our fathers, you have turned aside from my ordinance and you have kept, you have not kept them. Return to me. Somebody say return to God and he'll return to you. And he'll return to you. He said, now we're to return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you say, how shall I return? How shall we return? Will a man rob or defraud God? Yet you rob and defraud me. But you say, in what way do you rob or defraud me? You have withheld your tithes and your offerings. Wait a minute. You have what? Withheld your tithes and your offerings. So he said, how do you rob me? Now notice the scripture did not say you stole from me. He said you robbed from me. He wanted you to see the image of robbery because robbery shows you somebody having a gun pointed to your head and taking what you got without your permission in your face. If somebody steal from you, they're going to go steal it and run away. But when they rob, they bold. Give it, up, give it up. I dare you. Give it to me right now. And God being the gentleman that he is, he just lets you rob him and say, take it all. If you don't want to give me mine, take it. You have your own demise that you got to deal with. But I'm still God. I'm going to keep loving you. I'm going to keep caring for you. I'm going to keep on blessing you. But if you want to rob me, go ahead and take it. Now you have to deal with that repercussion of robbing, taking from God. Now God, the way he is, he said, I, I'm the same because if I wasn't, I'm going to let you rob me. And if I wanted to, I can kill you. He said, that's why I didn't consume you because I'm, I'm a gentleman. I, I love you so much that I'm not going to kill you by a choice that you made, but I'm going to allow you to have the consequences and the repercussions of the decision that you made. So you can rob me if you want to. And when you rob me, you bold. What you're saying is, God, I don't trust you. You can't do nothing for me, God. I'm going to make things my own way. I've got to make the money and to do what I need to do for my house. I'm the man. I'm the head. Then you say I'm the head, that the man got the head of the wife. Then you quote scriptures. Don't be quoting them scriptures when it's convenient. Quote them all the time. But soon you say I'm the head, you want to try to use that to control your wife and your kid. No, you ain't the head and you ain't tithing. Sit down somewhere. He said, you're a hypocrite. You're a fraud. Your children know you. Your wife know you. My pastor used to say it this way. If you can't convince the woman you're sleeping with, who else going to follow you? I'm just saying it. Words of Pastor Poe, Greg Poe. And I'm his son, so I have the authority to say it too. <laughs> so who else going to follow you, man? You, you doing all this. Your wife knows that you a hypocrite. Okay, I'm going to keep going because y'all, I, 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 I don't want to run the men away. Y'all doing good in attendance. <laughs> we outnumber the women right now, so I ain't, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm not. Because <laughs> you're going to live right. Amen. Amen. Like it, lump it, love it, or leave it. My job is to make sure I challenge you to do the very best that God has placed in you, to bring it out of you, and let God know, in God I trust. All right, let's keep going. Watch this. He said, but you say, how, in what way you robbed me? You are cursed with the curse, for you are robbing me, even this whole nation. Now here's what I want to spend a little attention to, and I want you to get these. These are three Ps that you get out of this particular scripture. Number one, he says, Bring all the tithes, the whole tenth of your income into the storehouse. Now notice he said bring the whole tenth of your income, not the tenth of your net. Your income is your gross. That's why you don't tithe off your net, you tithe off your gross. Bring the whole tenth of your income into the storehouse that there may be what? Food in my house. And prove me now by it. He said, I'm bad enough to tell you, if you do it, I'll prove to you that I'm God. I'll prove to you that you'll never be in life. Try. Try me and see. I'll prove what? 
He said, try now by me now, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows, plural, of heaven and pull you out a blessing, singular, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. So number one, God says, if you bring your tithes into my house, there'll be room in my house, I'll make provisions for your house. So the first P is, your tithe makes provision. Your tithe makes provision. Number two, verse number 11. And I will rebuke the devourer, the insects, and the plague that are for your sake, and you shall, and, sh and, and be, and he, wait, wait. And I will rebuke the devourer, insects, and plagues for your sake, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine drop its fruit before the time in the field, says the Lord of hosts. So number two, he says, I will rebuke the devourer. In other words, your tithe gives protection. Amen. You ain't running around here with a man with holes in your pocket. You've got protection because of your tithing. Amen. Oh, you listen to me. Amen. So as a tither, you have right. Number one, I've got provision that God will make. Number two, protection. The third P is found in verse 12. He said, and all the nations shall call you happy and blessed, for you shall be a land of delight, says the Lord of hosts. In other words, the land, the nation going to call you blessed. Now your third P is promotion. So your tithes give you provision, protection, and promotion. Are y'all getting that? So that's why you should tithe. That's the tithe is right. And I think I told y'all before, when my son was in the car accident, I, 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 uh, you're going to re rebuke this devourer, he shall live and not die. Amen. So I wouldn't worry about it. So that's how I could go, make sure he was okay, went to the hospital, get them checked in, and come back and preach, and went back to the hospital. Why? Because I knew that they were going to be all right. He said, I I'm a tithe of God. I'm calling forth my protection. Protect my child against this. Protect my daughter. Protect my children against anything that tries to come near them. When you're a tither, you got rights, baby. You got seed in the ground. And you begin to stand up and let the world know, I'm a tither, and I've got protection, I've got provision, and I've got my promotion. Give God praise up in here. Amen. So you don't get scared when the world on coronation, the world running scared, you let your faith outweigh your fear. The last thing I'm going to say, I'm going to give you eight things, and I'm, we're going to close here. Eight, eight, uh, eight ways to receive from God. And the ver verse scripture I'm going to use as a reference and just write it down. I don't have time to go over it. It's um, Chronicles 16 and 9. I'll paraphrase it. It said God is roaming around the earth to try to see who he can bless. That should be you. God is looking for you. He got a check with your name on it. He got increased with your name on it. He's looking for you. But you can only receive it if you put seed in the ground by ways, tithes and offerings. Amen. Amen? All right. So the eight ways to receive from God. Number one, you have to know there is a law of increase. In other words, the law of increase. Take what you read in the word and meditate on it in faith. The law of increase. Take the word that you read, meditate on faith. Meditate on it in faith. Number two, to receive your 30, your 60, or your 100 fold, we must spend time in the word. I don't care what you see, what does the word say? I don't care what you hear, what does the word say? You got to always revert back to what did the word say? Number three, decide on what you need. Tell God what you need. Lord, I need, I need a better job. I need, uh, I need increase for my house. I need my children to be disciplined. I need, tell God what you need. Amen. Number four, get an agreement according to Matthew 18 and 19. Agree with God concerning any matter that's written in his word. Let me just clarify that because some of y'all say, you say the agree with God? I want me another man. And she, he belongs to somebody else. Uh-uh. Agree? According to the word. I had to make it plain because y'all, some of y'all be passing you said. Mm -mm, don't misquote me. Number five, lay hold to it by faith. Tell God what you want. Meditate on it and lay hold to it by your faith. Put your faith in action. That's how you receive from God. God ain't moved by your tears, but he is. He does respond to your faith. 
Number six, bind the devil and his forces in Jesus' name. So you got to learn how to do the prayer of, a, of agreement, binding and loosing. I say prayers over my children every day. I bind up the spirit of lack. I bind up the spirit of lust. I bind up the spirit, and I, I release the spirit of love. I release the spirit of peace. Amen? And so you got to bind. And then number seven, loose the forces of heaven. So you got to bind up the devil and loose the forces of heaven. That's how you receive from God. And number eight, praise God for your answer anyway. Praise God anyhow. Amen? Amen? Come on, give God praise. Did y'all get that? Eight ways to receive from God. And I'm done. I'm done. I'm going to stop right here. Amen? Did y'all receive anything from the word today? Hallelujah. Give God praise. Give God praise. Stand to your feet. Let's go home. Amen. Let's get ready to get up out of here. Hallelujah. See, I ran a little over today because I, I had so much in me. Had to get it out, out of me. Next week, we'll start a new series. And our next series that we're going to start next week is called Living My Blessed Life. The Zoe Life. Living My Blessed Life. I'm going to tell you something. I don't care what it looks like. You're living your blessed life. The world says, Corona got me. But you're living your blessed life. Because I can tell you, in the middle of a pandemic, God has blessed those that he said he would bless. God has made provision for those that honored his word. God has provided when everybody else has lacked. Those that honor God, he has shown that he will always give you everything that you need. Amen? In abundance till it overflows. So baby, we're living our, good, we're living our best life. We're going to live life to the fullest till it overflows. And we're going to talk about that next week. Amen? Amen. All right, all right. Well, if you receive from the word and you're here today and you don't know Jesus, you don't know this Lord and Savior that I was talking about. If I was you, I would not leave this place without knowing Jesus. He is the Lord and Savior of our lives. And so the Bible said, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Christ was raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. With the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So if you're here in the building and you don't know Jesus, raise your hand and we'll pray with you. If you're watching us online, type in salvation. Type in salvation. I want to be saved today. It's a good day to get saved. It's a good day to know Jesus. Are you listening to me? Secondly, you say, well, Pastor, I'm saved already, but I want to receive the gift of the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Notice that the uh, evidence of speaking in tongues is a gift to the believer. It's evident to the unbeliever. Why? Because the believer gets to talk to the Heavenly Father in the heavenly language, and the devil don't know what you're saying. So it drives the devil crazy when you speak in tongues because he can't interpret it. He can't stop the flow. But God knows, and he responds by his word. So if that's you today and you desire to receive the gift of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, if you're in the sanctuary, raise your hand. We'll pray with you. Our elders, our deacons will, will pray with you until you, until you get it. Now notice, I'm going to say this. Even if you don't get it and speak it today, you can be speaking it on your way to work tomorrow, on your way home this afternoon. But if you receive it in your heart and you begin to meditate and you begin to open your mouth, it will come forth. Because the day you got saved, the Holy Spirit moves in. So he's lying dormant, waiting for you to speak. If that's you watching us online, type in Holy Spirit. Let me back up because I forgot our prayer on my decision. Let me back up and let's say our decision. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm trying to get y'all out of here. My bad. I, I skip, but I can't skip past this. If you're watching us and you repeat this prayer with us. From this day forward, I will follow your way. Jesus, you are my risen Savior. You are the Redeemer of the world. I repent of my sins now. And I receive your love and forgiveness. Today and forevermore, I give my life to you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Friends and family, if you repeated that prayer, welcome to the body of Christ. Give God praise. Amen. Don't let me forget that. My decision, my decision. Thirdly, if you hear you say, well, Pastor, I want to rededicate. It's a good day to rededicate your life. Don't be like the Pharisees. He called them hypocrites and frauds. Be for real. Get it right. Be like the tax collector. Lord, I, I, forgive me. I've done wrong. And you will go home knowing Jesus for real. Being restored back to your original place for real. That's an awesome place to be. So if that's you, raise your hand if you're in the sanctuary. We'll pray with you that you receive rededication. If you're watching us online, type in rededication. 
Last but not least, we have been leading God for covenant partners. And we're asking that God will send them from the north, the south, the east, and the west with the vision of Revealing Truth Ministries Outreach Christian Center already tattooed on your heart. So if that's you and you've been coming and you've been watching us, if you're watching us online, type in Covenant Partner. If you're in the sanctuary, you can get your things and come join me here at the altar. My wife and I, this ministry, our family, we'd love to welcome you to be a part of what God has called us to do here in this city, in this state, in this country, in this continent. If that's you, come on, you can, we're waiting for you. Well, amen. amen. None came, but there always remain room. Give God praise, amen, as we receive. <laughs> Pastor T is going to come. And we are going to, she's going to dismiss us, and we're going to go home. Amen. Let's give God another hand clap of praise for the word. Amen, amen, amen. Well, at this time, we're going to go ahead and stand to our feet for those of you that, okay, you know, they said, they're ready, they're ready, ready. ready to go. <laughs> That's going to talk too long. They're ready to go. Amen. Well, repeat after me. Now, let the words of my mouth. Let the words of my mouth. And the meditation of my heart. And the meditation of my heart. Be acceptable in thy sight. Be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, oh Lord, my strength, my strength, my redeemer. My redeemer. And I hug your neighbors and you are dismissed. Amen. <laughs>